Turn your Bibles to the book of uh, Revelation, chapter 2, if you will. I want to remind you a little bit, we talked about the Ephesians just uh, last Sunday, and um, they were the loveliest church, a good church. They were, the, were hardworking people. They were rooted and grounded in the faith. They knew what was right. They knew what was wrong and all the rest, but they had just drifted away in their love. And um, as the song was saying this morning, it, it, it opened my eyes, it, it, it helped me to love like you ought to. And uh, that's, so th those folks, just, they just needed to pray, and that's what we need to do. We need to ask God to help us to love him, help us to pray, and, uh, help us uh, to, to love him, and uh, like we all ought to love him. Today we're going to talk about Smyrna, the persecuted church. Now, this is a church that uh, and I think probably I'll say it maybe three different times, two or three different times, that uh, there's no, had, had no condemnation on. Uh, but anyhow, this church was going through tough, tough times, Smyrna. So uh, that's where, where we, let's read about it today. It don't take, there's not much in the, in the Bible about it, but let's talk about it a little, a little bit. Uh, verse 8 of uh, chapter 2. He says, and, the, and unto the angel or the messenger or the preacher or the, the bishop or whoever it might be, unto the angel of the church in Smyrna write, these things saith the first and the last. By the way, it, in every one of these churches, Jesus used something of chapter 1 and chapter 2 uh, about him personally and uh, he, here he uses, um, he says that um, these things are, these things said the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. I know thy works. Isn't that wonderful that he knows what we're up to? He knows what we're doing. He knows how, uh, how hard we work for him. And he says, I know thy works and tribulation and your poverty but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say uh, they are Jews and are not, but, are, this, but are, are, are the synagogue of Satan. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that you may be tried, and you may have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the church, churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. I want to talk to you about Smyrna this, this, this morning. Smyrna was a good church, but they were going through some very, very serious persecution, if you will. Uh, the author of the book, he had gone over to the Soviet Union after the Soviet Union had, had broken up and all that several years ago. But he was taught everywhere he went. He was a, he's, a, he's a very fine Christian man, by the way. Anyhow, he would visit various churches all around Russia and whatever. But he says that he, so, so he used the, the uh, persecution of the church there to help, uh, help people to understand the persecution of the church of the Soviet Union. Now, this is communism. This is Islam. The Free World Baptists in India are having a tough time. They, there are a bunch now, uh, there are several thousand people that meet on the national level and all of that kind of thing. But the Free World Baptists of India are having a t hard time right now. My wife, she sent off uh, some, some money this week just to, to try to help Friends of India. Uh, Brother Mike Jones, he is the um, treasurer and all of that. But nonetheless, um, it, it, anyhow, it, the Hindus are giving the church in, of uh, Free Will Baptist Church a hard time. It's not the communists, it's not them, it's not the, the Isla, Islamic people. It's, it is the Hindu people and have a Hindu president and all that. And you, you might, might could read the might could read that in your uh, uh, one magazine. I'm not, I'm not sure about that. But nonetheless, uh, the persecuted church of the Soviet Union. This was communism, 
and later on Islam. I just finished reading a book, by the way, um, about how Islam is uh, uh, persecuting Christian people uh, all, all over the world, if you will. But anyhow, there's constant surveillance. Can you imagine somebody uh, uh, looking at you all the time, watching every move that you make? Uh, as, by the way, they did that to Jesus. I was reading that about him uh, this week in the book of Mark and in the, in the book of uh, Luke. They was constantly watching Jesus and trying to, uh, to trap him. But anyhow, constant surveillance. Abuse by the authorities, and the authorities are of, uh, of, of Russia and the, uh, the authorities of India and, the con and other nations of the world are, are using their authority in the wrong way. America is, is using their uh, um, uh, authority in, in the wrong way as well. But anyhow, there was a constant surveillance. It was abuse by the authorities. There's a denial of an education, if you will, throwing people out of colleges and throwing people out of schools and not, not letting children go to school or whatever in, these, in a lot of countries because of their faith. Loss of jobs because of faith. And I could go on about that. Ban banishment to Siberia. Uh, that, 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 did, that did happen. And a whole lot of people have been banished off into si si Siberia by the, by the Russian people. They would torture them sometimes, and they would imprison them, and, uh, imprison these people sometimes, and even to the matter of death, if you will. She, she, she's going to try to help this, this sound here. But then, anyhow, uh, the, the persecuted church uh, that, 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 um, uh, that was in, in this particular book for the Bible. The persecution and the church. Now, Satan hates the church. He hates it with a passion. There's no doubt about that. Satan hates the church because the church will not, I mean, the true church. I'm talking about, I'm not talking about churches who, who mess around and do things wrong. And I'm not, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the true church. Satan hates, hates us and hates us with, with a passion. The entire world system hates us, uh, hates God, hates, his, hates God himself, hates Jesus Christ, hates the, the word of God, and his, um, uh, it's the entire system of God uh, hates God, his word, and his faithful church. They hate us with a passion, if you will. Christians should expect the persecution. Let me read 2 Timothy Chapter 3. Uh, give me just a moment to find that. And I'm, I, I want to read some, a couple of scriptures here. Second Timothy chapter 3 uh, and verse 12. Uh, let's see. It says, if the Apostle Paul said, if we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we believe not, yet he about as faithful, he cannot deny himself. I want to go back though and, and say it again, that if we suffer, we shall also reign with him. Let them do what they want to. I tell people all the time in, in messages or whatever, that the apostle Paul, they cut his head off, God had another head waiting, waiting on him uh, in heaven. But nonetheless, uh, uh, let me read First Peter chapter four, verse twelve, if you will. Uh, First Peter, uh, give, me, give me just just a minute to get that one. First Peter chapter three, chapter four, chapter twelve, in that one as well. Uh, it says, uh, "For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open to the prayers." Is that through? No, I'm sorry, that's four, uh, four twelve. Uh, beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. Now, church, the time is going to come. I'm, now, I'm not going to be here too many more years, and some of you are going to leave probably by the time I do. But, but before we go, we, I think we'll all, all of us will learn 
what persecution is all about. But anyhow, if it's uh, Peter said right here, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. That, that because it is, it, 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 how is it the Apostle Paul said in another place, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. God allows per per persecution for many reasons. For the maturity of his saints, for the establishment of his saints, for the strengthening of his saints, for the purifying of his saints. Think about every one of those things that I've mentioned to you. I've talked about the maturity. We need strong Christians. We need Christians who are mature Christians. And the only way, the best way to do that is persecution or difficulty, difficulties in life. Uh, there is the mature, there's the establishment of the saints, the strengthening of the saints, and the purifying of the church, uh, of the saints. Persecution purges is a church of hypocrites, charlatans, false teachers, and false Christians. Let me say that again. Persecution will get rid of, when we went through, when we went through the um, uh, lawsuit at Southside several years ago, uh, several people left. Uh, we, lost, we lost some people, and some people come in, they came to join us, you know, and that kind of thing. But um, I told people, I said, uh, we're, we're going to honor the Lord. We're going to do what's right. You know, no, no, no matter what takes place, I mean, if we have to shut down the church and go somewhere else, you know, that'd be all, that'd be all right, too. We are going to do what is right. And, uh, and we had to... To, to suffer a, a great deal of, of during that time. But anyhow, anyhow, um, uh, let's see, putting the church, uh, purging the church of hypocrites and charlatans and false teachers and false Christians as well. Persecution does not. People say, well, well I'll, I'll just persecute the church. No, persecution does not weaken the church, but makes it stronger. You can up in the, in North Carolina, and we and we plan to go up there and get some apples and so forth next week. But and, and spend some time up in North. There's the uh, Valdesians, um, and they suffered a, a lot in Italy. But uh, they found a place of uh, refuge in this, in the state of North Carolina, and they're doing a good job. They're good people, and uh, they love the Lord. But anyhow. Um, persecution does not weaken the church. It, 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 he talks about a crown of life. There are five crowns in the New Testament for the, for the saint of God. Five different uh, ones, five different uh, crowns. But that one uh, particular one he talks about here to this church. Uh, be faithful, and I'll give you the crown of life. Let's talk about Smyrna itself. The city and the church. And this was 40 miles uh, away from uh, on, uh, on the, the um, postal route and 40 miles north of Ephesus, if you will. To many, uh, to many it was the most beautiful city of Asia Minor, or Turkey. If, uh, I think I mentioned that to you last week. To many, it was the most beautiful city of Asia Minor. Several temples to idols, uh, idol gods were there. Was, there was an idol of Zeus. There was an idol to Apollo. There was an idol to Aphrodite. As I, there was an idol to Sibylle, and I could go on about that. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, it was a, it was a, they, they practiced idolatry uh, there it, it, uh, in that city, but it was a beautiful city indeed. Temple, but then they had a temple for the god Caesar as well. I think I was told you several different times that, that the way to stop the persecution in that day and time was just just, just to go over to, to where a building or something where smoke was going up and you know to Caesar and all of that kind of thing. And uh, just take a little bit and put it on the fire and it's smoking. I mean, 
It, it, when you did that kind of stuff, you was a part of the, of the, the worship of Caesar. But Christian people would not do that. Christian people would not be a part of the worship of Caesar. Jesus Christ was their Lord, and God himself was, was their God, not Caesar. But anyhow, uh, there was a portion of um, uh, part uh, of, of that for the God of Caesar. Also, it was known for its science, its medicine, and its academics. It was the birthplace of a man named Homer. Now, Homer was a very, um, uh, he was a very famous man, but man, and he still is a very famous man. He was a poet, and uh, he wrote the Iliad and the Odyssey and, so, and several other works as well. The city still thrives today as Izmir, with many Christians, with many Coptic, with many Syriac, with many Catholic, and uh, Orthodox Christians in there, if you will, and many, and many of those. This church was poor. It was very helpless. It was very rude. But, and it was rebellious in the eyes of the persecutors themselves. In the eyes of Christ, the church was faithful. Now, in the eyes of the, of the, um, uh, of, of the people of that day, with all of those idol gods and they, and they and by the way I've just mentioned a few. They had idols everywhere. There was idols all over the place. Then there was idols for, for Caesar. And then I, I could go on about that. But this church was poor. It was helpless. But in the in the eyes of their persecutors. But in the eyes of Christ, the church was faithful. It was holy. It was living, and it was spiritually rich. There is no condemnation to the church of Smyrna. There was to the Ephesians, and there will be to many others. There's another church that won't hit any there's no con condemnation. But let's talk about the synagogue of Satan for a little bit. In chapter, in verse 9, it talked about the uh, synagogue of Satan himself. I believe there's a devil. Uh, don't you? Yeah. And, and but he is he is roaring like like a like a lion, and yes, things are worse now than were than they were back in the fifties or the sixties or the seventies or the eighties. Uh, there's no two ways about that because Satan will see to it. Satan knows his time is short. He knows his time. And, and by the way, Satan is a is a uh, uh, what can I say? He um, uh, anyhow. Satan is, he's, he, he's, he's a, a, a person, he's a, he's a person, but he, and he's an angel, but he does uh, hate God and hates God's people. Let's talk about him a little bit. The Jewish community in Smyrna hated the Christians. Now, let me say that again. The Jewish Christians, uh, the, the Jewish community rather, uh, in Smyrna, hated the Christian people. They should have loved the Christian people. They should have been faithful to the Christian people. But such practice was, such behavior was practiced in Acts chapter 4, and Acts chapter 5, chapter 13, 14, and 17, and all of those. Uh, the the, the, the uh, people of that day and on that time hated Christian people. This is a chilling description of the apostasy of the New Testament Judaism. The Jewish people uh, drifted away from the God and did not. Now there were some. There were some people just like just like now. There are some Jews who are faithful to God and love God and all the rest. But the, most Jews do do not, you know. But nonetheless, they're still God's people. But as I was saying, the birth by birth. Uh, this is a chilling description of the apostasy on the apostasy of New Testament Judaism. By birth, they were Jews, but spiritually, they were blasphemous pagans and enemies of God. That's so heartbreaking, if you will. But there, let's, let's talk about a legacy of persecution. The letter to the church at Smyrna contains no rebuke or no condemnation. Think about that. God did not you rebuke those people. He did not condemn those people. Those people were going through tough times. Those people knew what poverty was all about. And by the way, I, 
most of most of us here know what poverty was all about. Most of us we were raised very very poor, but nonetheless, um, uh, the the church at uh, at Smyrna there is no rebuke and no condemnation. It does have a warning of more pers more persecution to come, more suffering suffering will come. More prison will come, more tribulation will come, more difficulty will come, more of uh, all kind of things that anything the world can think uh, come up with that, to to to, uh, to 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 make Christians suffer. They will they will do it. It talks about that there was a verse we talked about ten great uh, persecutions from Nero and from Diocletian. Nero was the one that had the, had the head of Paul cut off. Nero was the one who, who killed uh, Peter. Nero was the one, I, I could go on about him, but several of those uh, Caesars, from Nero to, from Nero to Diocletian, uh, there they, was a lot of people, a lot of suffering of the Christian church. Polycarp, but the disciple of John was the pastor of this church. Let me say that again. Polycarp was a good man. Polycarp uh, wrote some some good words uh, to encourage the church and all of that. And yet they took him out and killed him, but in a brutal, brutal way. But Polycarp was a he was a, a disciple of John, and he was his pastor. He was burned at the stake because of his faithful witness for Christ in A.D. 156. Think about that. There is, there is people who have been burned alive because of their faith in Jesus Christ. And that has happened uh, in the early days of Christianity, in the, in the Middle Ages, uh, over and over again. Uh, and I could go on and on about that. And we're in his is happening even today. He was burned at the stake because of his faithful witness for Jesus Christ in A.D. 156. What's the prize of persecution? Revelation chapter 2 and verse 10, we talked about a crown of life. There's, this is not a rebuke, but an encouragement to be faithful even unto death. Folks, listen to me very carefully. When this country starts its persecution of Christian people, and they are, they are doing it now, you are going to be persecuted, I'll be persecuted if we live long enough to do that. But now, if they could shut the doors of this church, they will shut the doors of this church. They've already done that in Canada. They're doing it in, in, in several other. In Mexico, there have been Christians uh, killed in Mexico. And I can go on about that. But anyhow, to make up your mind, I am going to live for Jesus Christ. I am going to be, I'll be faithful to him no matter what. what. A crown, he, he will give me a crown of life. Perseverance in, the face, perseverance in the face of persecution brings to the believer a special measure of God's love, his grace, and his power. I was reading just this week in the Bible where it says, when you are arrested as a child of God, uh, don't, don't worry about what you're going to say when you go before the judge. Don't worry about what you're going to talk about. He said, uh, the, the Bible says that the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of God will give, give you what you need to say uh, at that time. But nonetheless, uh, His grace, His love, His grace, and His power. I'm going to read it, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 18. Hold on just a minute. Let me, I, I want to read that one to you to encourage you a little bit. Uh, 2 Timothy. It'll take me a little while, but I'll read it. Okay. Uh, let's see. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Uh, verse 18. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work. It is, this is the Apostle Paul writing to Timothy. And he will preserve me unto his heavenly, 
heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. These people suffered. But by the way, the Apostle Paul, I mean, how many times was he beaten? How many times was he put in jail? How many times did he suffer shipwreck? How many times did they did, did all, all those things? And they chopped, finally they chopped his head off on the Ostian Way right outside the city of Rome and they killed, killed him. They killed uh, the apostle, the, uh, John the Baptist. And I was reading about him this week, that how, how John the Baptist was killed. The little girl dancing around, by the way, now, Hollywood has tried to make her out of, to be a hero. She is not a hero or a heroine or anything else. She, is, uh, she, she was a wicked girl. She went to her mother and said, what, what, what should I ask for? And, she, and the mother, was wicked, she was wicked as, as well. She said, the head of John the Baptist. And they chopped his head off and brought it on a charger on a, uh, on, on, to, uh, to, to his wife. But anyhow, he who endures persecution is promised that he will not be hurt by the second death. Now this church age, now uh, I've talked to you about the church age, uh, how the, the, these uh, churches in the book of Revelation is, is a description of various church ages. Uh, but I'm not going to try to go into that too much, but uh, let, me, let me give you this. You might want to write this down. This church age lasted from A.D. 170 uh, to 312 to the time of Constantine. Now, Constantine was a man who, uh, he was a, he was a um, Caesar. Uh, he, was, he was a Caesar of Rome, and he was about to, to face a, a battle, and uh, he turned to, to, turned to Jesus Christ. That's what he said. But nonetheless, uh, from A.D. to 312, the time of Constantine. I trust that this has been somewhat of a blessing to you. Uh, as, as we continue on, oh, that's, that's the second, second, uh, yeah, the second uh, uh, church. We'll continue on to look at all the churches of, of that, of um, uh, the Aaron church as well. Father, we thank you for your blessings upon us. Thank you for your love and mercy toward us. Thank you, Lord, for being our love, our Lord, and our Savior. Lord, do help us to be faithful to you no matter what takes place, no matter what the persecution might be, no matter what people might say about us and to us. Help us to be faithful to thee. Use us in thy service this week. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You're free to go in the field of the Lord.